Good evening, Facebook, and good evening to Zoom. Hope everybody's doing well and ready to rock and roll. Look, we are doing a grand recap tonight of all the business tips that we went through over the last eight weeks. I mean, it's been eight weeks already. Can you believe this? Uh, so we're going to hit on every topic that we've dealt with. Um, we'll, we're going to summarize it and package it to a finished product. At the end of the night, uh, you would be well on your way to, to getting your business reshaped or started. So let's get cracking. Hope you guys are doing well and hope you had a great week. Now, the objective uh, for the last eight weeks basically has been me giving you my thoughts um, as I went through my restructuring process, my thought process, organizing my businesses, organizing my life. Um, I sh basically shared with you uh, the essence of that and um, basically just wanted to assist at least one person, one entrepreneur to get their business started, get their business remodeled and uh, to calm nerves during this very trying time. And so I trust that these tips have been helpful for you and um, you have been well informed uh, as we go through. Uh, now that we have completed eight weeks, I want you to remember what our motto was. Our motto for the past eight weeks has been don't panic, plan. So as we end this tonight, I want to reshape the motto. The motto is don't panic, execute as planned. So we're go going from don't panic, plan to don't panic, execute as planned because you're now in the execution mode. Now, as usual, I'm going to give you a few mind regulation. I don't want you to be stuck in your ways. Uh, so in your view, no matter how experienced you are in the entrepreneur realm, I want you to please consider all these things that we have dealt with. Give them a shot. What do you have to lose? Huh? Um, just just try to, to open your mind to something else, uh, to do business differently because we're indeed in a different time, in a different era, uh, given the pandemic. So we need to do things a little differently. Again, I want to remind you that in order to, to gain your greatest success, your greatest wealth, uh, you need to be disciplined. And that comes with introspective look. We have to look at what we've been doing in the past, how we've been doing it, and try to change that view. Try to uh, organize ourselves. Do not be procrastinators. Uh, the world is not waiting on you. No one is waiting on you. So self-discipline is key. And let's not look to other people, other things for motivation. Let us look from an intrinsic perspective inwardly to motivate ourselves. So, you know, whether the guy on the side of the street is singing or dancing, uh, we ask you to be mindful of what is going on in your mind, your mindset so that you can motivate yourself. You can lift yourself to that higher level and tell yourself that you're going to achieve whatever you set out to achieve. So regardless of uh, what challenges you're facing, what challenges the pandemic has brought on your life, on your business, uh, know that you are responsible for you you're responsible for your happiness, you're responsible for your motivation and your general success of your business. So intrinsic motivation. 
Now, just a reminder of the seven, seven topics we've covered thus far. We've gone through budgeting. Uh, we dealt with stimulus packages, your internal customers, business planning. We covered restructuring and recalibrating your business. We also did revolutionizing your corporate brand. Uh, we touched on customer service and external customer service from an external perspective. And we will need, in my view, all of these seven topics in order to survive and during the pandemic and even after the pandemic. So I encourage you to please uh, look at those videos whenever you get the chance or uh, just brush up tonight and follow as we go along so that you'll be in good order for taking your business to that next level. You're either your existing business or your new business that you're about to start. This is a really serious time health-wise, but financially it can really make us or break us. So the choice is ours and I really encourage you to, you've been with me for eight weeks now, I really encourage you to launch out deep and conquer this thing Take control of your financial destiny. Don't hope and wish and dream, but plan and execute. Now, we dealt with budgeting. We dealt with a few things in budgeting. Uh, but even before you start dealing with budgeting, there are a few things that you needed to look at. Uh, you needed to look at what liabilities you have. And we explain that liabilities are things that you owe. So anything that you owe to someone is a liability. Um, so that could be the mortgage for your business, the business loan. Um, it could be whatever, maybe you have something out on, on higher purchase. Uh, whatever your liability is, uh, we ask you that you list it and you have a full view of exactly what you owe. Sometimes, I don't know about you, but sometimes it's easier to just close your eyes and pretend that you don't have debt. <laughs> uh, but that is a very dangerous view. The body tries to shield itself by wishing things away or, or pretending that they don't exist. But the reality is we can, we can achieve so much more if we understand where exactly we stand. So that's why understanding what your liabilities are um, is a very key point. And uh, the other thing is, what are your assets? What are the assets that your business owns? Uh, and obviously you can apply this to your personal finances as well. What are the assets that you own? Uh, thirdly, what are the income that you, you earn? So things, things that you may be selling a product, you may be selling a service, uh, or if you are in the process of getting that business started, what income is coming in from another means? So jot down exactly what your income is and then deal with your expenses. What are the commitments? What are the weekly commitments, the monthly commitments that you have to meet? This may sound like it only applies for businesses, but it applies for everyone um, under the sound of my voice and also those who aren't even listening. Business, personal finances, you cannot survive if you don't know these key things, your liabilities, your assets, your income and your expenses. You should know this just how you know that tomorrow's coming. You should know exactly where you stand and you should have them listed, obviously. Now, uh, create your monthly expenses and your associated income. So this is where we get into actually forming the budget. Where, um, how, list exactly your expenses for the month all the things that you need to cover for that month, list them, um, list all the, the income that comes in. So make sure that you put everything down on paper, on your Excel sheet, 
on your Word document, however you choose to keep it. Um, but the fact of the matter is you need to understand uh, these key things in order to, you can't just wish that you, you're in a good financial health. You have to really look at where you are in order to see how you can get uh, to another level. Okay, and be disciplined with your budget. What that means is a lot of times we, we have our budgets for our business, but we don't follow. Put yourself in that position whereby your budget is like your key. Your, in order to unlock your bank account, you need to know what you're spending going in your bank account for. So you have to look at your budget and then go into your bank account. Don't go into, unless you're going into your bank account to just view where you stood or where you stand to make sure that there are no fraudulent charges. But if you're gonna spend, uh, associate that spending with your budget. The minute you start putting your monies in your purse and just pulling out chunks and, and spending, monies go like that. The minute you start swiping your card and not uh, associating that swipe with your budget and tracking what you're spending, you're in for trouble. Your money is gone like that. A few tips with budgeting. If it's not on your budget, don't get it. So this goes back to discipline. If the item is not listed, uh, you need to be disciplined enough to say, look, I am going to plan for this next month but this month I am really not going to use that uh, because as we know, we should all be uh, seeking from personal finances and also your business finances, you should be seeking to set aside at least six months work of expenses. So you should have an account where you're just planning for possible COVIDs, COVID-20, COVID-21, if there's such a thing. Um, but the concept is you're planning for that time when your business isn't able to generate revenues or your personal, whatever other means of income you have, um, you're not able to generate that income. So you're setting that aside for a rainy day, the older folks call it. Um, you know, you hear a lot of pop-up videos speak about passive income and residual income. Those are all well and good. And the ultimate uh, goal should be for passive income. What passive income, as we said, passive is basically just what it says. It's where you don't have to do anything. Uh, it's money while you sleep. Uh, when you wake up in the morning, ching ching, it's in your bank. It's in your bank account. Uh, passive. You're not. You're not. Uh, you don't have to use any energies per se to or resources, added resources to make that money. It's just happening. Um, and that passive and active active income is basically where you are going out on the grind making the money, doing what you need to do to get the revenues in. So the ultimate goal is to have residual income uh, from various places, multiple streams of income. In order to be where we, we all aspire to be, where we don't have to think about how the next dollar is coming, is to have various streams of income. And when it comes to uh, business, that uh, then uh, deals with diversification. However, you have to be very, you have to be very careful. I think that is uh, right. So you have to be very careful when it comes to uh, just rushing into other streams of income because you don't, you don't know, um, you just don't want to spend like that. People, people, entrepreneurs, they become so comfortable that they think that, look, oh, there's an idea, pop. I'm going to pop that idea tomorrow. But if you don't budget properly, you're looking for trouble. So again, focus on that one active income. However, look at other means of 
diversification and plan accordingly. And that's where we're going to get into business planning. Again, I would like to reiterate that you should know your financial position at the end of every single month. Obviously, you should have a real-time uh, POS system or a financial system, um, but at least you should be getting reports on a monthly basis. What accountants do and bookkeepers do, uh, it's absolutely important. We need to understand where we stand financially and we should not take that for granted. So no matter what business you're getting involved in or whatever business you're currently involved in, uh, I encourage you to, to make sure that you understand where you stand financially. And if you don't know, then retain an accountant uh, to assist you with setting up, at least setting up your, your books so that you can then real time view where you stand even if you don't want to take on the running cost of having an accountant i would very much encourage you to but at least have a system where you can go in you know that it's being populated you know that you have a robust uh, front to back process so that there isn't fraud or um, you at least mitigate fraud uh, by setting up having a qualified professional set up your uh, front to back processes from a budgeting perspective so to ensure that you're well on your way now the second thing that we covered um, is the stimulus package and we said that throughout the Caribbean and that's that has been our focus the Caribbean has been our focus because the Caribbean is so close near and dear to my heart we have focused these past eight weeks on understanding what the Caribbean is offering. And I asked, I encouraged you to look at your newspapers, uh, view your government sites, ask your representative tough questions so that your, uh, whether that be your political representative, whomever, ask them exactly what the government has been doing. Um, Check your national insurance schemes to see what is being offered. If you have a small to medium size uh, business, again, and that has also been our primary focus over this time, SMEs, uh, again, near and dear to my heart, because I believe any economy who wants to get into first world status needs to have a robust, small and medium sized sector. Um, so make sure that you find out whether your government is subsidizing small, small to medium sized businesses and ensure that you capitalize and, and, and apply for those stimulus packages. Again, if you come into a stimulus package, do not make the mistake of becoming possessive because money can uh, influence people to be possessive. And so you forget the main reason why you apply for it in the first place. So you, if you applied um, for a stimulus package to assist with payroll, um, do that, honor that. Make sure that your people are well taken care of, your bills are, are taken care of. Be careful of deferred, accrued, items so whether uh, your bank said to you that they're deferring your loan um, but there is a crude interest deferred on its own is bad because at the end of the day you will still be faced with that bill so it's just gonna hide for a minute but it's gonna catch up on you uh, my advice has been to if you can pay it ensure that you pay it uh, if you cannot pay it, obviously you would need to do what is best based on your budget, um, but do not just take it as a holiday or a break that you're getting. It's not free money. So be, be cognizant of that fact. Um, you, you may have heard your central banks uh, say that they are working with your local banks to defer your mortgages 
um, whether that be mortgages on your businesses or um, your personal um, homes, etc. Be very careful with that and, and look at your budget again and ensure that you, you plan accordingly. Now, the, the third topic that we covered was our internal customers. And we stated that internal customers or your employees they're the, they're the life, they're the blood of your organization, the livelihood of your organization. You need to really take a step back and understand these guys' value to your business. Um, again, like I said, there has to be a balance because employees can also take advantage of you and really give you a bad reputation. Um, and some people are really not disciplined. So you have, to under, you have to understand the people you're dealing with. Because if you're not dealing with the right uh, personalities, then you should not be afraid to sever ties and, and, and find new ones. But bottom line is, ensure that your people are performing their duties and they're well trained to perform their duties because if someone is not well trained that may lead to demotivation and um, just disgruntled behavior because they're not well trained on their their particular function now we also said that um, you you need to ensure that you're looking out for them especially during this time we're dealing with human beings and um, and so we need to step away from, uh, from just only looking at the numbers, but also uh, understand that these are, um, it's a whole chain effect, like we said during the presentation um, a few weeks back. It's, it's, it's your employee who's connected to their, their spouse, their kids, et cetera, et cetera. So the whole chain effect, uh, just make sure that you're cognizant of that fact. And be very, pay attention to their level of engagement, how engaged uh, do your employees appear to be. And if you notice hints of demotivation, etc., you need to uh, investigate for them. And have frank discussions and expectations. So at, at no point should you have persons who don't know um, what their responsibilities are in the organization, what your responsibilities are, uh, what your expectations are. So make sure that you do clear uh, performance reviews and uh, review of tasks, review of, of promotions, etc. And um, ensure that there, they can connect the dots so the employees can see how their role helps you to get where you are. So for example, if you are a business involved in tourism and your employees are tourist facing, um, be cognizant of the fact that they're the ones who will give you that review <laughs> or cause you to get that good review or bad review um, on whatever the, the um, evaluation tool that the tourists use. So look at, um, at, ensure that they understand what their function is and how it relates to customer satisfaction, external customer satisfaction how it relates to your vision for the business and your mission and your entire culture and what you're trying to achieve. And that's my um, soon to be two year old screaming for me. <laughs> um, now, we got into business planning. This should not be taken lightly, ladies and gentlemen. You should not pop up tomorrow and claim to open a business all right um we said we advise that you should focus on your most your top uh business idea we went through the criteria for for selecting that business idea 
And once you would have selected the business idea, uh, the one that is most practical as well, that only then you, you begin to plan on that idea. It's not wise and I don't advise it to uh, have multiple new businesses uh, at the same time. So phase them out, ensure that one stabilizes before you go into the next one because that can bring serious issues. It can bring serious cash flow issues, reputational risks, um, and just the general success of your business. Uh, because if you're, if you're spread thin and you aren't able to really focus on developing that business, you're in for trouble. Uh, we said that for any business that you're looking to open, do, you need to do your research. Research is key. Uh, spend some time looking at the idea that you have, um, looking at other countries who have previously implemented this idea um, or even uh, businesses within your country to see how it's done, what your competitive advantage would be, and generally how you're going to make this work. So understand the ins and outs before you even open shop. Research, research, and more research. Uh, again, once you would have, or during the research process, once you would have selected your idea, put pen to paper or keys to your PC. And, and again, I want to reiterate, do not wake up from a dream with an idea and say, you know what, I'm a great businesswoman, I know how this works, I'm gonna implement. You're looking for trouble. A fee says so, all right? Tell whomever, fee said that. Do not just pop a business up. We said in our business planning segment, we showed the, the five steps and we went through a simple overview which you would then need to dig deeper, but at least have your simple overview before you get started. I understand a lot of conversation goes on in your head. Trust me, in my head, I don't think anybody wants to spend a day in my head. There's so many ideas, um, but I have to calm myself down, pull myself back and say, hold up a second. Let me see what what this really means is this feasible how does this clash with my other brands how does this uh coincide with everything else and once you would have mapped out or fleshed out your overview uh i always encourage you to engage a professional get some good eyes who can get into uh your projections um, to see what your pricing should be uh, because you want to get all of those things good from the start and um, again go back to our business planning video and and really remind yourself of all the things that we said now we the fifth topic that we covered is restructuring and collaborating your business now ladies and gentlemen uh, friends, family, you know, let's be real. Sometimes we have to take a step back with our business because it's not going the way that we envision. And especially during this COVID-19 time, uh, we just need to understand where we stand. Um, understand um, what your financial standing is. Uh, make sure that you were being efficient um, while, while effectively maintaining your supply, how efficient are you? How cost effective are you? Take a step back. Do you need to just real scratch and start again, uh, scrap the whole thing and restructure? Or do you just want to have to put some things in order, put, pull some strings together, recalibrate the system and get it working? But the key is again, to be honest with yourself. And what goods and services did you provide? Um, so if you're taking an introspective look into your business, what goods and services you provided and what can be added or taken away? Let us streamline ourselves. Uh, we said, we said we, if we're going to cut product lines, let's cut product lines. 
if we're gonna cut services let's cut services if we're gonna minimize the amount of different pricing structures we have let us do that and that should be uh, the step that we take for our existing business and if you are a startup business please remember to do this at least once a year where you look at where you stand see what you need to change and change effectively um, again what is important is understanding your target market so if you need to restructure from um, the current market that you stand in to a new market then um, that is the step that you just need to take and you need to to, to understand your market um, now once you would have restructured uh, part of I broke it into another topic but a closely related topic is revolutionizing your corporate brand now we said we we actually went through uh we took stock of where we stood with our corporate brand and by taking stock we looked at from our vision we looked at our mission statement um how how is our logo what what our co corporate colors look like the the entire shebang how do you stand up as a business and, and we gave the example, even if you are a micro business, you should really make your corporate identity, corporate branding stand out because that is what is going to separate you, uh, whether you are a hundred dollar business or a million dollar business, your branding, your identity. So when you start out, start out right start out with a bang and and now is the time to revolutionize your branding uh think about your vci we mentioned your vision your culture your image what your business stands for in terms of vision what is the culture within your organization that your internal clients or your your employees would be able to attest to what exactly is your culture what is your vision for the future and the image? Where do you want, what do you want your customers to see you as? Uh, how do you want them to associate with your products? What is the vision for your business and the image that you want to see out there? And we want to make sure that we're properly aligned and not misaligned. So it's okay to sit in a, in a sandbox and create your vision, your culture, your image, but if it isn't communicated and communication is key throughout the organization, you need to understand that all the pieces need to work together. So from the, the, the CEO to the whoever else you have in your organization to the front desk person to the receptionist uh the janitress everyone need to form a an association and, a, and an appreciation for where you stand and 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 how you want to um achieve your goals and to make sure that there's proper alignment in your business okay um can you check on him so the make sure daddy has him well <laughs> uh make sure again if you need to realign if you need to realign your business you do that um to ensure that there is no misalignment um make sure that your business is your VCI is properly aligned if there is need to realign that you do that swiftly so that you don't lose your your product offering your status on the market market share that you stay in the game now the seventh topic that we covered which uh, is a very crucial one very important is customer service and that relates to your external clients um, now we said that the team understanding your business and your VCI really is key and in order for them to truly understand your business they need to be trained 
retrain on your products and services. Uh, you need to make sure that your employees are engaged. Uh, we encourage you to implement mystery shoppers. Uh, we said that the customer is not always right, but uh, they should leave feeling appreciated. Um, role playing different situations with your employees so that they can understand when a situation comes up how to deal with it and we we basically encourage you to keep your ears to the ground this is not similar to our homes where we would clean one area today and leave this other area open this is a constant thing we need to constantly go back and clean we need to constantly engage and re-engage. Business is so that it's, it's not a spectator sport. Business is really contact. You have to be in the game. You have to look to see what your numbers are saying, uh, what your employees are telling you, the feedback and the changes that you need to make, uh, and, and all of that stuff, you know? So, I, I really trust that these eight weeks have been helpful to you. Um, and now what we are branching into, um, you would see that, I've, well, I've already been booked for a few shows already uh, with other persons. So um, you, you'll probably see me pop up in um, either on my social media or their social media and share it on mine. Um, but it's very key that we remain uh, awake, that we understand what our businesses offer and who we're offering it to. Um, now, remember our, our new motto, don't panic, execute as planned.